Greetings, friends. It's Langsor again with the Cycle 2 Perfect Starter Guide. Kinda. What this really is, I have made a list over here on what you should be doing or not with your, with your new character in Cycle 2 that is up and coming for Last Epoch. It's actually very simple, honestly. Um, and there's a bunch of key things I wanted to, to mention in there, other than just running into your newest build. And the first one is the most obvious one, I think. It's very obvious. Look at the cla- oh boy. Okay, I guess I can't click on that, but you can see it. Look for a class you like and choose something that's fun, not something that is OP. That is a key thing. People just don't want to... I mean, Ponyhof also recently said this on, on Twitter. And also great Diablo 4 streamer. He said he gets a lot of shit in YouTube when he posts a build that is fun, but it's not OP. Because someone in the comments be like, Dude, this build is not as good as XYZ build that is overpowered right now and fully the meta. Yes, but maybe I just don't like playing that. <laughs> you know? It's the same thing when people tell me when I play uh, some sort of... Like Sorcerer, for example. And people told like in Last Epoch, people told me, Yeah, but you know, Healing Hands Paladin is much better. You can go to 40k ward or whatever. Like, yes, but I don't like Paladin. It's just a boring playstyle for me. So if you want to get the most out of the game, or the new cycle, choose a class that is fun. Unless, of course, it is a class that is completely shit ass. Then again, it sucks. But we don't know that any class is going to get changed for 1.1. And for the next cycle. So, yeah, we don't know, right? Anyway, ignore the OP stuff, focus on something that is fun. Key thing. This is also general advice, not just for 1.1. Um, I wouldn't recommend going for the most OP builds if it's not your kind of playstyle, right? Ignore that. Now, if you're, for example, a Diablo 4 Druid player, or if you are a Last Epoch Forge Guard player, then you have to pretty tough because these glasses suck right now. Then you have to live with the pain until they get buffed, I guess. Anyway, the main idea is, what I usually do is when I look for a new build in Last Epoch, is there an item a build focuses around, especially after the 1.1 patch. So, for example, you look in your stash, right, and you have an item. Like you go, this is how I do it, I go with the um, uniques. Uniques, right, they have special effects for your classes, or like for skills. For example, we have this relic, right? The Box of Hydrate. That is a mage relic for the Rune Master. It gives plus two to Rune Invocation and gives you um, Hydrohedron area and cast rate and damage and all that. So, look what new items are coming out, especially uniques and what they do to specific skills or classes. And then you want to maybe build entire build around that. I mean, this one is obvious. This is for the um, Rune Master, but also there was the Plague Bearer Staff, this one. I was looking at this and was like, okay, that is. Almost 200% chance of poison on hit, inflict plague on hit, poison penetration, more damage over time. That looks really cool for a poison warlock build. So I took it, threw it in the warlock, and made an entire build around that. So first you want to look, is there any item, especially unique, you can also farm for, or farm towards, that helps you with, like that super supercharges a specific archetype, right? That's one you look for. And there is many, right? There's many uniques. There's a lot of things you can work with. So maybe something you just enjoy that looks cool, that sounds cool on the items you want to try. Right? That's the first step I do. Then, is there a specific skill I want to try or build around? That's the next thing. Maybe, like you have this, for example, let's, uh, the, let's say the Poison Warlock with the um, Plague Bearer Staff, right? And then you look into skills. You go into the skill sheet and look at the Warlock. What does the Warlock have that could help me here with this? Can I turn and, for example, with poison, right? I can look at this, this symbol down here. Okay, I can turn the Kefanic Fissure into poison. Nice. But that's about it. Hmm. It sucks a bit, but okay. What else do we have? We have the Wandering Spirits. That can be poison. Nice. Then we have Aura of Decay. That's poison. Drain Life. That's poison. I think what I actually went with was... Curse that also did poison because sometimes it doesn't really show it properly, so you have to look into it and you just type in poison. Okay, there's nothing in this one. I think that was in Harvest. I mean, you can see the symbol poison chance. Nice, so we can run Harvest on this. Wait, Harvest can be auto cast by the Chaos Bolts, for example. Maybe there's something with that. So you look into synergies with your item, with the skills. So this is the key thing you want to look for. This really makes a build in Last Epoch synergies. 
The best thing is if, like with this build I'm running right here, that's the um, Bleed Warlock, right? The Chaos Bolts and the Rip Blood, they are auto-casted by my Fissure. I really only cast, to do damage, I only cast Fissure. This is the only thing I cast, and then I can even still run around because it does the damage itself. And I have three evasive skills, actually four of them, to be honest. No, it's three. Three, right? Chaos Bolts I never use myself because they're auto-cast. This is the perfect synergy, so you gotta look for this. Synergies where one skill auto casts another one, or gives another one a buff. This makes the builds super strong, but it usually there is something that has great synergies with other things. Alright, so this is the next step you wanna look for in your skills. Another thing is, is there a specific node? For example, the Chaos Bolts has these threshold nodes, right? Over here. Chaos Bolts deals more physical damage over time for 4% unkept cold resistance. If you see this, it's a threshold node, right? You see, oh, damn, this is great. That means I need to, like, I can really charge up the damage if I go for unkept cold res, which is what I did here. 372% unkept cold resistance. So that supercharges this one. Supercharges the Chronic Fissure, which is also supercharged by this one. And now this doesn't apply to Plague Bearer Staff because this isn't poison, this is the bleed build, but let's say there is some other item. There's also bleed items, I didn't go for it here, but I went with the ladle because um, this also gives a lot of negative ailments, which give me more spell damage. But look for synergies. Now, not everything has to be perfectly synergistic, like in this case, right? I don't have a specific cool two-hander or one-handed item that fits well with this. What I have is, for example, the, these, they give me more bleed duration, right, and physical ailment damage to moving. That's a nice addition, but not really necessary, okay? But this is sort of the idea. Is there a note that is super cool? Maybe you just want to only go for that note, and there is not an item that fits it, but you just throw cold resistance on all your items. So you get that note bonus damage. That's the next step. Another key thing, if you make your build, focus the damage on one type if possible. Void, cold, minions, cold, fire, etc. That means, especially with Warlock, it's sometimes tempting to go for all the damage over time damage types. I'm not a fan of that. Even though the Warlock can do it to an extent, I'm a fan of focusing on one damage type. Because you only have so many affixes you can put on your items. You have so many passives you can use. You have so, only so many idols you can use. So, I have cold resistance on pretty much all these, right? You see, it's all tier 6, cold resistance, cold resistance. It also has, no, this one doesn't have it. Um, I mean, this one obviously cold resistance, cold resistance, cold resistance, cold resistance, and physical damage. I went with this to cap everything. I didn't go for, like, poison damage, frostbite, bleed, damned. I didn't go for that. I focused on one damage type, and I would highly recommend you do the same, because then the build... It's not just much easier to play, because this gearing is much easier, because you only have to focus on one damage type. It's also stronger. Right? So also, focus the damage on one skill, if possible. Key thing. For example, if I have... Right here, I only have, really, the main damage dealer I have is Kephanic Fissure. I threw everything into making Kephanic Fissure better through that synergy, right? With the Chaos Bolts and the um, Rip Blood. Now I have, of course, also Profane Veil is also physical damage. I converted that. Um, Ghost Flame is physical damage, yes. But it's not for ma damage mostly. It is for these are evasive skills, okay? I do these to evade because the Nikolite, even though we're sitting on almost 5k health here, is still somewhat squishy. So, if you can, focus on one skill to throw all the damage in that. If we're thinking of the Volcanic Orb Mage, or Rune Master, for example, you put everything in the Volcanic Orb. Don't make your Glacier super strong and your Volcanic Orb and a third skill. Focus on one and make the whole build around this. I know this sort of limits your gameplay, but we are here to min-max. This makes these builds just much, much stronger. Uh, look for synergies in notes. I think I already covered this. Um, oh yeah, a great key thing is, and I want to mention this. If, for example, you have... Um, yeah, you want to build a rip lot and you are in Chaos Bolts. And you can just search and you click in rip. 
right? You, you, in top right, you can type in something that searches within these nodes. And you can search for um, skill names, like in this case, Ripblood. You can also type in Harvest. See, then I see, okay, this can be autocast. Harvest can be autocast from the Chaos Bolts. That's great. Or I go into my fissure and type in Chaos. And here it says, Spirits now have a chance to be replaced by Chaos Bolts. So this is how you can find these synergies easier. That's pretty much what I wanted to tell you with this. Supporting skills for the main damage or skills. Yeah. Another key thing. As I mentioned earlier, all these other skills are really just supporting skills. Right? Rip Blood, for example, only it doesn't really give much damage. It gives bleed stacks here. That's cool. But it's mostly for the health, which is converted to ward. So when the Fissure casts the Chaos Bolts and then the Rip Blood, I just gain more ward. So these are supporting the main skill. There's also other instances where... A skill can support another skill, meaning if you cast it, it buffs another skill, right? So for your, the second skills you want to choose from all these you have at your disposal here, you want to look in how they can support the main damage skill I'm going for. A uh, specific passive like the major one that turns all blending... Oh yeah, passives. Now I was mentioning um, the Poison Warlock, right? A big thing of the Poison Warlock is the Vile Tide. When you cast a damage over time skill and enemies within 50 meters have a combined 25 or more stacks of poison, which is easy with a Poison Warlock, you gain Poison Overload for 12 seconds and cast Defiling Nova. And the Defiling Nova is just a huge poison explosion around you, huge AoE. And that was one of the key things of that build. Okay, so you also can look for in your passives, you gotta look for things that support your skills or support your damage type, things like that. Now, I can't show it here because we're not the mage, but the mage in the base mage class, there is a note here that says your volcanic orb is converted to cold. So, you also wanna look into this because volcanic orb usually is fire, right? So, you wanna look, okay, um, I found this note, but it converts it to cold. What if I actually go with a cold mage in volcanic orb instead of fire? And that could be your build. Now, that's a key thing to mention here. Last Epoch still sadly has the problem that if you switch... Like, you can switch damage types a lot with all the skills, right? There's usually a... For example, here, right? This turns the um, fissure base fire damage into physical. There's also another one where you can focus more on fire. If you switch damage types in Last Epoch, at, at least for now, it's usually worse than the existing base version. Usually, I say, unless you have like an item that super buffs it. Because most of these nodes are usually geared towards the base damage of the class, right? Now, even though the Sass is also swaps your damage over time to bleed, like ignite to bleed and fire to physical, even if that is swapped, some of the other nodes just don't apply anymore. So you gotta be careful of that. Sometimes it's not clever to actually swap the damage type. But that's that's a lot of work you will have to read for it or just try it, right? Again, you can always just switch your build in between if it doesn't work out the way you want. And that's pretty much point nine I was going for here. Just try it and solve the problems along the path, mana, resistances, etc. Do not focus all on damage. Keep defenses in mind. Key thing. Let's f go with the first one. Don't fear or recraft too much. <laughs> okay? Just try it. Decide on, for example, the... Frost Volcanic Orb, and I'm like, okay, let's just try it, let's go with it, let's see how it does, and then along the path you'll figure out, okay, this build is not bad, but I'm lacking mana all the time, okay, so I need mana. Or, it actually sucks, I don't have a good item for it, and there is no item that really buffs it well, let's try something else, you can respec, right? So don't try to min-max before you even play the game. Again, it's about having fun, so figure that out along the path. Another key thing is, do not focus all on damage, keep defenses in mind. I mean, this is just a base advice, right? Um, you want to have your defenses capped mostly. I don't even have this here, um, because I'm still building that. But and physical should always be over capped, it should be at like 80 or 90. And I personally think you should have like 50 in these, and at least 50 in the other ones as well. Physical always, because most damage is physical. but. This is your health, right? And if you die fast, all your damage is pointless. You always gotta look for your defenses, especially late game. Okay? Very, 
Very important. Another key thing is, in the end game, crits are usually, not always, usually better than just fire damage, for example. How you scale, except for the Warlock, Warlock is a bad example, but with just regular spell damage, for example, you usually scale this way better in the late game with crits, and I'm meaning crit multiplier, not crit chance. You want to get your crit chance up, so you do crits a lot, and then crit multi to actually do a lot of damage with them. But for many builds, crits are still one of the strongest thing in the entire game, late game, because it supercharges your damage pretty heavily. Now for the Warlock, not so much, because damage over time can't crit, but that's an exception. Mo most builds actually do gain a lot from crit chance or crit damage. Remember, free and corruption is max what the game is balanced around. I consider a build successful when it can do empowered monoliths, no problem. People hate me for this, <laughs> but I think, I truly think that if you can do empowered monoliths, no problem, or like even 150, and let's say you want to go to 200 corruption, which isn't even that much of an increase in damage from the empowered monoliths. If you can do that, your build is done. It's finished, it's great, it's working. You get the best, you have access to all the unique items so far. You can find them easily, you get better items from your uh, echoes. There is no need to go any higher. You can if you want to, but don't think you have to go to 2k corruption because other builds on YouTube have done that. There is no need to do that, absolutely not. Um, if you want to do a build outside of the cycle and just test things first, use an existing character and respec. Yeah, key thing, because there will be so much changed and maybe you don't care about the pinnacle boss, you couldn't be bothered, you just want to play Forge Guard finally because it's getting buffed. You finally want to play a good Forge Guard, then just take your legacy character and just ignore the cycle. All right, and just try and figure things out. Again, is it about being fun? Okay, it is about having fun in the game. It's not just about min-maxing everything and being perfect in all you do. You want to have fun with the game after all. The last key thing is check out video on how to proceed through campaign the fastest. If you go to my YouTube, it's actually buried down a little. At this point, it's somewhere... This one, the most efficient way to level your art through the campaign last epoch. I posted this when last epoch was already a bit down, so nobody cared. But this video explains to you how you get through the campaign the fastest to level your art, or like you level your new character in the cycle, while getting all the last, um, getting all the passive points and all the idle slots, but not playing through the entire campaign. Which, to be honest, it's most of it. You have to play through most of it. Um, but you can skip, I think, two chapters entirely. And this way you still get all the, the buffs and benefits you need for your character. So check that out. That makes sure you go through it the fastest. So that's how I will approach the new season. I already made my mind up my mind up on the build. I will be playing the Bleed Warlock. Unless it gets completely nerfed to shit, like this one I have here. Um, because I'm working towards the Pinnacle Boss, I want to make this easy for me, so this, I think, is the best build for that. Personally, if you like the castle stuff, if you are more into, um, I don't know, Paladin, then it's probably not it. But this is how I will approach it. This is how I would recommend you go with it. I'll post these this list below in the description, like this one, so you can look at it yourself, sort of like a checklist. And that's it. Tell me what you will be doing. If you think there is something missing, I forgot about something, or what you would add to it, let me know in the comments below, and I will see you in Cycle 2 latest. Until then, have a good time.